This time last year is when I launched Chase Cutting Kitchen. Armed with nothing but an iPhone, I set out to make cooking fun and mean it this time. And since it's the channel's first birthday, I think a birthday cake is in order. However, I'm a lazy fart. So let's make one in bar form. That way it's easier to bake and eat. First things first, preheat the oven to 350 degrees. Does the sight of ice in a beverage trigger you? The number you're looking for is 175 degrees Celsius. Seriously, you have no idea what you're missing. Now, we'll assemble our ingredients in a stand mixer. Oh yeah, did I mention? I got a new stand mixer. Okay, that's enough, this thing's heavy. Now, let us begin. Let's add in two eggs and one egg yolk to the bowl. And with the paddle attachment, beat them on medium low. Add two and a quarter cups of cake flour, sifted, because the thing about cake flour is it's gonna clump up on you, especially after you open the box. So with the mixer still off, add in about a third of our flour, stir it until it's well combined. Add in the next thirds. Combine. It's gonna look a bit doughy, don't worry. And add the last third of our dry ingredient. Stir it to combine. You know it's a bit too doughy, so add half a cup of milk. Turn off the mixer and add one cup of sugar. Stir to combine. Add half a teaspoon of salt and drizzle in two sticks of butter, melted. It's gonna take a while for the butter to work its way in. Be patient. Let's also add two teaspoons of vanilla and a quarter cup of rainbow sprinkles. Ooh, rainbowy. Stir until everything's well combined. Finally, scrape down the sides of the bowl with a rubber spatula. Give everything one last stir. And when it's all said and done, transfer the cake batter to a parchment lined eight by eight baking sheet. Links to both in the description. Take our cake in the middle of our 350 degree oven and let it cook for 35 minutes. Once it's done baking, place the pan onto something heat proof, then grab the cake out of the pan using the parchment paper and let it cool on a cooling rack. And once the cake cools down, put a plate on top of it, flip it over and remove the parchment paper. Then take our baking pan, place it over the cake, flip it over, and boom. Now you can't have a cake without frosting. Well you can, but your self-hatred levels must be through the roof if you think you can have a cake without frosting. Thankfully it was only a phase, so let's make some. A simple buttercream frosting will be perfect for this. Now in the bowl I have a stick and a half of unsalted butter. Make sure it comes to room temperature so it can soften up. To which we'll add two tablespoons of mayonnaise. Don't click away. I know that sounds insane, but the mayonnaise is going to help bind everything together and give the final product a smooth texture. And using the whisk attachment, let's combine everything. Once everything's well combined, slowly add two cups of powdered sugar. Do this in batches. Scrape down the sides of the bowl. Then add one teaspoon of vanilla and half a teaspoon of butter extract. 
This, in combination with the vanilla, will give us a nice cake batter flavor. Throw on low to combine. Then turn the thing to high to make it nice and fluffy. And once the frosting is done, spread it on top of our cake bars and top it off with rainbow sprinkles. And voila, we made a cake in easy to eat bar form. And since this is anniversary related, how about we take a look back at my first video? If done right. Oh God, never mind. This has been Jay's Cutting Kitchen. I'm CRJ, making cooking fun and meaning it for about a year. Hey, CRJ here. If you like the video, smash the like button. If you, if you really like the video, become a subscriber and hit the bell notification icon. I upload every Thursday. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter and Instagram. If you're wondering why I have dark circles under my eyes, please subscribe so I can get rid of these.